Could history be so stunningly wrong that the temples built by King Solomon and King Herod were never on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem? Jews and Christians alike believe without any doubt that these temples were located on the Temple Mount for hundreds of years. Hidden away in the Temple's Holy of Holies rested the Ark of the Covenant. And so for Jews, the Temple Mount is the most holy place on earth. A billion Muslims hold this to be the most holy place as well, believing it to be where Muhammad ascended into heaven from the area of the Dome of the Rock. This presents a huge problem for several faiths that all clash at ground zero at a place in Jerusalem that we know as the Temple Mount. It should be no surprise that this is a most volatile piece of real estate where more blood has been spilt over the last 3,000 years than any other place on earth. Many believe this will be the site of World War III. But what if the Temple Mount is not the true location of the temples? Will tradition even allow a closer look? Do we find anywhere in the Bible, ancient history, or physical evidence that the temples were located somewhere else? On the other side of this wall stood the first temple and the second temple. They were destroyed. And the third temple, when the Messiah comes, will come here on the other side of the wall. And we're told that God's revealed presence never left these stones from the time of the temple to now. And that's what we feel here when we come here, God's revealed presence. It is the holiest place that we have right now. And the third temple is gonna come right here. Okay. So, okay. This, so without a so doubt, you believe there's, there's, there's no doubt about it. There's, there's no, no doubt. doubt. Although most people today are convinced that the temples were located on the Temple Mount, that wasn't the case 1,600 years ago. If I told you in the fourth century there was four places that rabbis were suggesting for the temple, four different locations in the fourth century, would you believe me? No, our, 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 our tradition is that authoritative tradition wins out, and we go with what we have. We don't, we don't, we, we don't do our own thing. We don't try to make our own assumptions. We, we, we have what we have. If we don't have what our parents and rabbis gave us, then we have nothing. Before somebody can come along and change what's already been established, they're going to have to be greater than the ones who established it. Challenging a long-held tradition is not easy, but it's mandatory in our quest to find the truth. Having a, a tradition challenged uh, is never, never, never comfortable. And yet essential if we're going to really get at the truth and what really happened and what really is going to happen. You are Jew? No, I, I have no time to lose with you. <laughs> Could it even be possible that the greatest archaeological mistake of all times has occurred in locating the temples of Herod and Solomon on the Temple Mount? And if so, where is the true location of the temple today? The prophetic implications are absolutely astounding, and the political repercussions from it could alter the entire complexion of the Middle East. Hi, my name is Bob Cornuke, and we're in Old Jerusalem, and I'm about to take you on an expedition like you've never been on before. We're going to look for the lost location of Solomon's and Herod's temples. I believe that archaeology has really missed this one. I think that history is stunningly wrong, saying that the Temple Mount is the place of where Herod's temples and Solomon's temples were located. So we're going to take out the Bible, and we're going to use it as a road map and as a compass to solve this most ancient mystery. In around 957 BC, God had King Solomon build a temple for worship, sacrifice, and to house the Ark of the Covenant. This magnificent facility stood until 586 BC, when the Babylonians destroyed it and took the Israelites captive. In around 515 BC, Zerubbabel and other Israeli exiles were able to return to Jerusalem in order to rebuild the temple on top of the demolished first temple. This second temple wasn't as spectacular as Solomon's, 
but served its purpose until 20 BC, when King Herod initiated a significant renovation and expansion project. This is the temple that stood in Jesus' day, where he taught on several occasions and where he confronted the money changers. In 70 AD, four years after the Jews rebelled against the Roman Empire, military commander Titus and the Roman army utterly destroyed the temple. Today, many Jews and Christians are anticipating the day when a third temple will be rebuilt, as foretold in the book of Ezekiel. Tradition says it needs to be rebuilt on the same spot where Solomon and Herod's temple stood. Will that be the Muslim-controlled Temple Mount, or is it somewhere else? This makes the search for the temple's actual location that much more imperative. Biblical explorer Bob Cornuke has spent the past few decades searching for the real Mount Sinai, the Ark of the Covenant, Noah's Ark, and the Apostle Paul's shipwreck in Malta. His search for the location of Solomon and Herod's temples really began several years ago when he was reading Matthew 24. The Bible tells us in Matthew 24, uh, where Jesus is speaking, and he's speaking to his disciples and he's walking away from the temple. And he is looking up at the temple and he tells the disciples, he said, Truly I tell you, not one stone here will be left on another. Every one will be thrown down. Not one stone. Total annihilation. And that's what we hear from history, that the temple was totally destroyed. The hill called Zion and Jerusalem, the building there, that is to say the temple, has been utterly removed or shaken. It was so thoroughly laid even with the ground by those that dug it up to the foundation that there was left nothing to make those that came thither believe it had ever been inhabited. But if Herod's temple was utterly removed, how can the western wall of the temple exist today? Either Jesus was inaccurate in Matthew 24, or perhaps the western wall wasn't part of the temple at all. About 63 BC, the Romans took this city. General Pompey had the gates opened up to him. And from that point on, the Romans had control here for over 300 years. The big question is, where did they stay? No one has ever found one brick that they know of that's from the Roman fortress. I believe it's because it's been on the Temple Mount. That was the Roman fortress that huge complex. If you look at it today, it is in the same dimensions as many Roman fortresses. So where did the Romans stay? They stayed on the Temple Mount. Locating the Roman fort on the Temple Mount explains how the temple could be utterly destroyed, yet still have remains existing to this day. The Western Wall, instead of being the remains of Herod's temple, may actually be a part of the Roman fort. Eliezer Benjar, the commander of the Israelites taking refuge at Masada said, Jerusalem is now demolished to the very foundations and hath nothing left but that monument of it preserved. I mean the camp of those Romans that hath destroyed it, which still dwells upon its ruins. The traditional view places the Roman fort called the Tower of Antonia at the northwest corner of the Temple Mount. This three-acre plot supposedly housed the entire 10th Roman legion but how large a legion? History tells us that a legion is approximately 6,000 soldiers. With the support personnel, it could reach as high as 10,000 people. If I was in command of the 10th Heavy Roman Legion, sent to Jerusalem to keep the peace, I would have occupied the high ground. I would have put my soldiers on the Temple Mount. And as I look at the, the little bitty building that is called Fort Antonio today, it's almost laughable to believe that 6,000 soldiers and some 4,000 camp followers occupied that, that tiny building. 
Would Rome, the proud rulers of Europe and the Middle East, be content to locate their fort as an appendage to the Jewish temple? Or would they be more likely to commandeer the entire Temple Mount to build their regional military headquarters? Again, we turn to historian Josephus. Now as to the Tower of Antonia, it might seem to be composed of several cities. For if we go up to this Tower of Antonia, we gain the city, since we shall then be upon the top of the hill. The only location that is on top of a hill and is large enough to house 10,000 soldiers and support staff is the 36-acre Temple Mount. In 333 AD, the so-called Bordeaux Pilgrim traveled to Jerusalem and describes what he found. I'm in a high tower about 100 feet high right next to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre and it's a fascinating place because from this position, the Bordeaux Pilgrim said that he looked due east and all he could see was the long wall of a Roman fort. Well, when I look due east of here, all I see is the long wall of the Temple Mount. So what I think the Bordeaux Pilgrim was describing was looking at the Roman fort from this spot. In fact, that's pretty conclusive. That's what he was looking at was the Temple Mount complex. Certainly, I believe, was a Roman fortress that housed the 10th Roman Legion. So if historical evidence places the Roman fort on the Temple Mount, why do the majority of people believe that this is where the temple was located? When it was over with and the temple was destroyed by Titus in 70 AD, that it was just like a field with blowing grass. You wouldn't even know that it was there. And so the Jews that were quarantined from Israel for so long, uh, it's hard for them to determine where the temple was. So this has been the place that everybody settled on. In fact, in the, in the fourth century, uh, there was many places that people were trying to figure out where is the temple really located? People were not sure. One important event that promoted the idea of the Temple Mount being the location of the temple was the invasion of Jerusalem by the Crusaders. And in 1099, uh, there was thousands of Crusaders and they came and they conquered this Temple Mount complex. And when they went on top of it, there was great carnage. A lot of Jews, a lot of uh, Muslims were killed and they crawled up on the dome. It wasn't gold then, but they crawled up on that dome area up there and they ripped off the crescent moon and they replaced it with a cross and they called it Templum Domini, which means the temple of God. That, I think, started a tradition. 70 years after the Crusaders conquered Jerusalem and 1,100 years after Herod's temple was destroyed, a Jew from Spain named Benjamin of Tudela visited Jerusalem and wrote that the Temple Mount was the location of the former temples. His emphatic statement seemed to seal the tradition, and from that point on, it has been virtually unchallenged. Well, I believe that this is not the place of Solomon's temples and Herod's temples, but it's actually in the city of David, a few thousand feet south of here. And we're gonna go to the city of David right now, and we're gonna try and see if that is the true place where God tells us that temples were located. The City of David is a 12-acre plot of land just south of the Temple Mount. We're here in the City of David, and it was back in the 1800s where they established that this was the City of David with the discovery of the Gion Springs and Hezekiah's Tunnel. When King David arrived in Jerusalem, the City of David was inhabited by the Jebusites. David's men captured their fortress, and 2 Samuel 5.9 says, so David lived in the fortress and called it the city of David. And in the scriptures in 2 Samuel chapter 24, verse 18, it is revealed that David was, after he conquered the Jebusite city, which is right under the city of David, he was required by the Lord to purchase the threshing floor from Ornan, the Jebusite. And then in 2 Chronicles chapter 3, verse 1, we see that Solomon, it says that Solomon first began to build the house of the Lord by the threshing floor that was purchased from Ornan the Jebusite. Solomon's temple was in the city of David, the Jesuit fortress. I, I can't see how you can argue with 2 Chronicles 3.1. If we're going to take the Bible at face value, that's where Solomon's temple was. The city of David is also referred to as Zion. 2 Samuel 5.7 says, David captured the fortress of Zion, that is, the city of David. Eusebius, a third century historian and curator of the library in Caesarea, wrote that the temple was in Zion. 
the hill called Zion and Jerusalem, the building there that is to say the temple. King David took the Zion Citadel Castle and changed the, his name to the city of David. It's mean Mount of Zion is the city of David. Or Citadel of, of Zion is the city of David. We're standing in the area of the city of David. Here's an archaeological site, and there's the south wall of the traditional Temple Mount. So we're in the general area of the Temple Mount. And, and this area we have seen in photographs in the 1930s. And we see these terraced farms, and you can even see the people out there tilling the ground. And it's very interesting that the Bible says this in a prophecy. The, pro the minor prophet Micah says in 3.12, Zion shall be plowed like a field. Jerusalem shall become heaps of ruins and the mountains of the temple like the bare hills of the forest. The temple's gonna be like a plowed field. Well, there's no plowed field up there. Those walls have been up there, you know, a couple thousand years. If that is really the temple, Micah says that should be a plowed field. It never was, this area was. So we can be assured that in the city of David, it matches with what the prophet says and what the Bible says in history. You know, there's not a theory that it doesn't have a long list of critics that line up, especially the temple theory. It's so shocking to a lot of people. They say, wait a second, the temple in the city of David and the stronghold of Zion? And then they say, wait, wait, we, we have a great verse here that, that tells you that you're wrong about the temple being in the city of David. Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes to bring up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord from the city of David, which is Zion. People are saying, well, it was brought up out of the city of David, thus it was brought where? They surmised to the Temple Mount. The Bible doesn't say where it was taken. It was placed into the Holy of Holies after that, underneath the wings of the cherubim. Now, where was it taken when it was taken out of the city of David? There was a huge festival where all the priests of Israel came, where they slaughtered so many animals that they couldn't even count them, the Bible says. The city of David's just a 12-acre area, very, very small confines. So they couldn't have done that in the city. They went and had this big festival, like a state fair. It's not gonna be done in City Hall. And then they brought it back into the temple, which was in the city of David. A little-known historical account describes two covered bridges or colonnades that span some 600 feet between Fort Antonia on the north and Herod's temple to the south. Josephus describes them. Now as to the Tower of Antonia, it was situated at the corner of two colonnades of the court of the temple, of that on the west and that on the north. He then describes Fort Antonia as a guard to the temple and mentions that it is located on a higher hill and that it hindered the site of the temple on the north. These descriptions confirm that the fort was on the higher temple mount, while the temple was 600 feet to the south and at a lower elevation. There's a story in the Book of Acts that also confirms this. It describes the time that the commander of the Roman soldiers quickly deployed troops from the fort down to the temple to rescue the Apostle Paul from a riotous situation. At once, the commander took along some soldiers and centurions and ran down to them. Then, verse 40 describes how Paul addressed the crowd. Paul, standing on the stairs, spoke to them. These were the stairs leading back up to the fortress Antonia. Another clue to the location of the temple is the Gion Springs. The fresh water source is mentioned in the Bible in 1 Kings 138, where Solomon was brought to the Gion to anoint him as king. Fresh running water is also necessary for worship and to perform animal sacrifices which took place in the temple. 1 Kings 862 tells us, on the day of the temple dedication, Solomon offered a sacrifice of fellowship offerings to the Lord, 22,000 cattle and 120,000 sheep and goats. Cleaning up after the sacrifice of that many animals would require a huge amount of running water. Roman historian Tacitus tells us the temple contained an inexhaustible spring. You have to have running water from a spring to wash and purify the priests before they go into the temple to worship. Here we have clear, clean running water coming from the, from the Gion Springs 
which travels through Hezekiah's tunnel and comes here to this pool of water. Before the priests would go into the temple, whether it be Solomon's temple or Herod's temple, they needed to be bathed in spring water. The only spring water in all Jerusalem is right here in the Gion Springs. There is absolutely no spring water on the Temple Mount. There's no way that they would have washed themselves in the Gion Springs and then walked a quarter of a mile to a half a mile up to the Temple Mount before they were allowed to go into the temple precincts considered to be purified. Tradition, when valued higher than evidence, can be a stumbling block to finding the truth. But tradition can also provide valuable clues when accompanied by scriptural, historical, or physical evidence. So local traditions need to be considered in our search for the temple location. Yeah, I've been a, a tour guide here for more than 13 years. And there's some amazing things that we're discovering now that, is that are to the south of the Temple Mount area where we believe we found the Temple of Solomon, which is going to be to the southern part. And Solomon's Temple is possibly really in this area, close to the city of David. We know from all my life that the Temple is in this area. Nobody say that the Temple is under the mosque. Nobody say that the Temple here in the corner, and nobody say the Temple here. But all the people who understand in these things, they say the temple is under the city of David. This is the de city of David. The city of David. Okay. The, they say, the Jewish say, some of the Jews say that the temple has been here. Right, the Jew on the Temple okay. Mount. Yeah, in Temple Mount. There is another people from Jewish, they say the temple is yeah. in the mosque, under the mosque. So from my opinion or from my what I see or hear, most of the people say that it's under the city of David. So you're saying that the Bible is telling you and archaeologists are telling you? The Bible say this is the place. The city of David. The city of David. The Bible say. Yeah. The Bible say that this is, but like if I speak, nobody will hear. Another people, nobody will hear, but it's something politic. Beyond politics and tradition, is there any archaeological data to support the idea of the temple being in the city of David? A couple years ago, I was going on a tour of the city of David, which is an underground labyrinth of tunnels and caves. A lot of these stones are believed to be from the time of Abraham, the Jebusite fortress, and things mentioned in the Bible. But as I'm walking along, I saw this flicker of light way up in a shaft uh, where men were working. I heard metal on metal, and I saw the flicker of light. And up inside where they were working, I found out later on, was a place that we believe could be part of Solomon's temple. And we're going to be going there, but it all started for me right up there through that shaft where I saw that light two years ago. This area was excavated recently by Ali Shukran, who was this director of archaeology in the city of David. I think he stumbled across uh, an area that was within uh, part of the, the structure of Solomon's temple. This is from the first temple period, even be before that. We're going to back to the Middle Bronze period, 800 years before King David. 800 years before King David would place this around the time of Abraham and Melchizedek. They used this place as a worship area and then they still use it till the end of this area. It's like the end of the 8th century, beginning of 7th century a a BC. And this is the only place that we know in the city of David that we can say here it was some worship with a, with standing stone, with a stella, with place for sacrifice, with all what we have around here. And this is a place for worship, this is a place for praying, this is a place for a, a sacrifice, and this is a, bit, a place people connect with the God. We're here in this incredible archaeological site. Right below my feet here is an olive press. You can see where the the wood beam went in here and they ground the olives. Olives are very important for anointing someone going into the temple. Right close by, within 30 feet, we have the Gion Springs. And you needed that rushing water to anoint the priests before they went to the temple. We also read in scripture where Solomon was brought down by a mule to the Gion Springs, right here. And he was anointed with the oil 
when he was a crowned king at the Gion Springs, which is right where we are. And amazingly, archaeologists have recently uncovered this area that is dated to the first temple period, and it has within it channels. If you look here, this is a channel where the blood ran. The blood ran here. They would kill the animals, and then the blood would go through here. We could see where the animals were actually tied up. This is where the rings went through, and this tethered the animal. When archaeologists came here, they found just piles of bones all through here, evidence of animal sacrifices, and they found these unique grooves in the ground. And these are believed to be, uh, Eli Shukran told me, the archaeologist here, that these were stands, like wooden stands or metal stands. So this area here, going well over there in here, is an old, ancient sanctuary, which I believe is a, is a part of Solomon's temple itself. You got the blood channel, you got the, the, uh, the olive press right there. You've got little hooks, uh, stone hooks in the side of the wall where you could tie off animals. And it's probably 10 yards from the Gion Springs. Perfect place to have water. Because if you're doing a lot of sacrifices, this, you need water for that. Is this Solomon's temple? I don't know. Is it Herod's temple? I don't know. But according to a top Israeli archaeologist, it is a temple. And he is not ready to say it was the temple of Solomon or the temple of Herod, but he said it was a temple. And it's in the same place that 2 Chronicles 3.1 says Solomon set up or built the temple to the Lord. It's in the city of David, right near the Gion Springs. Could it be that this ancient sanctuary is what remains of Solomon's temple? Herod's temple, which was built above Solomon's, was completely destroyed in 70 AD. But these remains, covered over by the Babylonians in 586 BC, fit perfectly with 2 Chronicles 3.1. This stuff is blowing my mind. We think that these rocks around us are telling us that this is the exact place of Solomon's temple and everything is pointing to this place and no other. It's not on the Temple Mount. It's in the city of David by the Gion Springs, which is gurgling just a few feet away from where I'm standing right now. Well, I think one of the things we need to tread carefully because it's so emotional. We need to realize we're dealing with deeply held beliefs. So we need to, we need to do that with some compassion uh, on the one hand. But at the same time, I see it as a healthy thing because it should draw us in the direction of re-examining our scholarship. There are certain places where your big challenge uh, isn't finding new evidence per se. The biggest challenge is to set aside your presuppositions so they don't get in the way of discovery. I think that, I think that the position of the temple being in the city of David has merit. Of course, it raises all kinds of other questions. The fact that the scriptures say that the uh, temple was in the city of David and it had to be near the Gihon Spring. And I look at the Temple Mount and there's no spring up on the Temple Mount. So I've become a firm believer in the fact that the temple was not up on the Temple Mount. I'm convinced it was right there in the city of David. If indeed the temple was located in the city of David, what implication does it have for today? Obviously, a lot of Christians are saying, well, if the temple's ever going to be rebuilt, it's got to be rebuilt right where the Dome of the Rock is. Wow, that's not going to set off World War III, is it? <laughs> but if, if the real temple was in the city of David, which is to the south of where the Dome of the Rock is, significantly to the south, outside the current city walls of the city, then the temple can be rebuilt in the city of David and not touch the Dome of the Rock. That has incredible political implications, quite obviously. In Luke 8, 17, there is a fascinating verse. For nothing is hidden that will not be revealed, and nothing concealed that will not be made known and come to light. Could it be that the temple is one of those things that, that's hidden, that will be revealed, that is concealed, that will come to light? 
we're ever going to find the temple, I think we need to use the Bible. And the Bible is telling me that the temple has to be in the city of David, in the stronghold of Zion, and the luring pull of oral traditions needs to be ignored. That's where we'll find truth, is in the Word of God, and not what man is guessing, but what God is telling us.